caring coworker assaults me at work. This is OKOP, home to the craziest true stories on earth. I'm Sophia and Riley. Fight back, fight back. That's all we have to say. So always tired 24 seven says, we will call my coworker Karen, as you should. Yeah. And let me preface this by saying that I am 21 year old female and 19 weeks pregnant. Oh. Wow. Oh, She's oh. throwing hands at a pregnant woman? That is the worst person to throw hands with. A pregnant woman? A pregnant woman? She has the power of one a and a half people. A 19-year-old pregnant woman? 21-year-old. Sorry, a 21-year-old pregnant woman with a 19-week-old pregnancy? She has a power of one and a half human beings. That's yuck. You're going down. Karen is a 60-year-old woman with huge attitude problems. I figured... I work as a teller at a bank and have one run in before now with this teller. I have a okay story time. Okay. I don't have hard evidence, but I believe this woman used confidential bank information a few months ago to make a false accusation to the cops for animal abuse at my home. What? Oh, like got the bank, inf like the address maybe. Oh, mm. oh. When asked about it, she denied it and got angry with me and then involved multiple coworkers in it, even though the conversation happened outside of work and lied about our whole conversation, saying I was accusing her and calling her a liar, which didn't happen. When brought to management's attention, I was reprimanded, not on paper, just verbal, and she walked away unscathed. I haven't spoken to her on this specific situation outside of the one minute phone call that I made to ask if she was the one that had made the accusation. Wait, 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 wait. So basically, OP called up the Karen because she thought Karen had called the police on her using her address that she got from like a bank information. Yo, or something. that's not cool. Yeah. I'm that wondering, you know, like what um, OP had to back this up. Mm -hmm. I mean, like not to say that it isn't the Karen, but like I understand why. But like out of all your coworkers want her. Well, no, no, no. Like specifically like why management wouldn't be able to do anything if they don't, you know, if she doesn't proof. If it was just like a gut feeling, she's like, I know it was her. No, it's Karen. Yeah. I don't know why, but I just feel I it. I just feel it in my gut. Well, I mean, her gut is pretty smart right now. Or is for me to be smart. What? Because it has a baby in it. Oh. The past week, I've worked every day in the drive-thru of our bank with this woman. Since that incident, I have been nothing but kind to her. Keeping coals of fire, if you will. <laughs> what? Coals of fire? Yeah, like... Keeping coals of fire. Is that a I feel saying? like I should know what this is. Keeping coals of fire. Like, I understand the vibe of the saying. I don't understand the saying, though. King James Version Keeping of coals of fire, if you yeah. will. If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee with good. The theme here is not revenge, but repentance. No, no. Oh, taking the high road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a saying I've never heard before, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to use the thine version though. Do it. Good luck working that into a conversation. Oh, uh, just watch me. But she's the kind of woman that if she's in a bad mood, anyone else who is in a good mood should go to hell. Oh, I hate these people. Mm -mm -mm. I hate, but I don't like them. I don't like them. That's all I got to tell you that. I've been working with her and one other girl the past two days. Yesterday, Karen got upset about 3 p.m., decided not to join in the conversations. So the other girl, we'll call her Amy, and I ended up joking around and finishing the day with a laugh. Today was the same. She was salty all day, so we just didn't really give her extra attention outside of work-related things. At the end of the day, she got angry with me for not doing something that was actually her responsibility. It wasn't a big deal. And I said, sorry, I didn't realize it hadn't been done. Ooh, sassy. Um, she came at me saying that she was tired of my attitude and lip that I've been giving her all week. I have literally walked on eggshells around this woman for two months because of how she twisted the whole animal abuse thing. Yikes. I tried walking into a different room to get away from her yelling at me. And my supervisor was standing in the room I walked in. Karen followed me in, yelling at me, and brought up the animal abuse situation. Accused me of calling her a liar and treating her badly, giving her attitude over it. I told her I have never spoken to her about this at work and would not speak about it at work. If she wanted to talk about it, she could speak to our supervisor. I tried to walk past her back into the other room, and she put both hands on my chest and pushed me backwards. Whoa. 
At work? Now you're going to tussle. At work. In front of two people saw this happen and one of them was my supervisor. Yeah. One, Karen, you need to choose your battles. Two, choose your place of battle. And who you battle. And who you battle. You're all wrong. All wrong. You don't know how to battle. My supervisor didn't do anything. What? But the other person did, Amy. She jumped in and told her she wasn't going to start acting like that while I backed away with my hands raised in a surrender position while she started yelling at Amy. I managed to get past her and grab my things. And as I was walking out, she was still yelling at Amy. So I turned around and yelled, hey. And she aggressively replied, what? And I said, if you ever effing put your hands on me again, it will not end well for you. Don't effing touch me again. OP did not come to play. Dude, I can feel a mama bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's out. like, don't touch me or my baby. I see you, OP. You're doing great. And she tried to say that I shoved her hand away one time years ago while she was trying to do something. And I literally have no idea what she's talking about. What do you mean years ago? Is that even possible? Also, years ago, like, remember that one time? You when you were trying this. to move past me and you accidentally brushed your hand against me. And then she's Assault. like, I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to fight you now. Imagine holding that in for that long. Well, it doesn't seem like she actually is. It seems like she's just trying to bring up anything that will make her look better. Oh, yeah. My supervisor did not get involved at any point. Fire the supervisor. The supervisor sucks. Isn't that your job? They're not doing anything. They're supposed to be super. Well, maybe they're like, my job is to supervise. I'm watching it happen. <laughs> And that's it. My job is not to get involved. No, that, that's yikes. They should be fired for that. I left work and messaged my supervisor and branch manager and told them I want to speak with them and the bank president on Monday first thing and explain exactly what happened. But based off the conversation I already had on the phone with my branch manager, he made the comment of finding a way to work together. Work together with the Karen? I don't know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. The fact that they're not doing anything to like punish the Karen... This is wild. Yeah, this is a not a safe workplace. What can I do outside of talking to my supervisors? And there's an update. Yeah, and there is an update, yes. Okay, so fire her. Yeah, well, she can't do anything because the supervisor and the branch manager won't do anything. Well, huh. It seems like we don't why know. Why are they it not might, yeah. wanting to do anything? I don't anything. understand. I don't understand it. Well, like why this Karen is they're protecting her. I don't know. I think at this point, safety-wise, you might have to... If they don't do anything and this continues to be a problem, it might you might have to leave. But yeah. you could also, I feel like you could also start a suit. This is true. This is like a physical thing that, I, you know, of course, that's very expensive. I'm just like shocked that the supervisor did not. Didn't do anything. Like get in there and be like, yo, you're out. Go yeah. take a walk. At Even least. if she hadn't been like hadn't laid her hands on um, OP, just the fact that she was screaming at her at work in front of people, that would yeah. have been enough. That's like an, a totally enough for like a, you know, probation or something. But let's get into the update and see if the branch manager and the supervisor did anything at all. I want to say they did the right thing and fired the Karen. I'm hoping. I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that they fired Karen and gave OP a raise. They have to. It's on Reddit. Well, we're about to find out. Today, I had a meeting with head of HR, the bank president, branch manager, supervisor, and Karen. So one, two, three, four, five. five. And five then people. herself. And six. then herself. Yeah, six people in this Ooh. meeting. It's a lot of people. I had sent HR a very detailed description of everything that happened, named names, dropped times, everything I could remember thanks to some people's advice on my previous post. Nice. Good. They started off the conversation saying that both of us were very wrong. What? I was confused because the only thing I did wrong was cuss at her after she pushed me and told her if she put her hands on me again, it would be a problem. I don't consider that wrong, but whatever. Yeah. That's, I don't consider that wrong either. Someone's attacking you. Be like, hey, you're warning them. Yeah, that's a warning. They let her have her say first. She told a lie from the beginning. That I've been hateful and had an attitude towards her when she's only trying to help. That mm. I have been aggressive to her and I bullied her. That I started it by shouldering into her while trying to walk past her after she tried to politely tell me she didn't appreciate my attitude. She said I hit her first when in reality I never put my hands on her at all and had tried to leave the argument twice. Said our supervisor watched me do it. My supervisor didn't deny or agree to it. 
Whoa. You suck, man. Jesus. Karen said, she hit me and she came towards me again while she was mad. And I thought she was actually going to hit me because she's already pushed me once. So I put my hands up to stop her. My supervisor chimed in and said, I was just so shocked. I wasn't expecting anything like that. So I didn't know how to react. <gasps> my jaw hit the floor. Wait, no, no. What? With the supervisor is corroborating her side of the story. Well, you were there. You were there. You saw it. This is some, something's going on. Whoa. There is some shady stuff going on here. That is, oh my gosh. I'm bamboozled. Not only did this woman make up a completely different story, somehow my supervisor is on her side, even though she didn't see anything except for what actually happened. You had a front row ticket to this and now Literally. you're saying this BS? She also made several other accusations, which were false to try and make it seem like I've tried to turn our coworkers against her. But that's also false. Oh. After she had her say, I had mine. Clap back. You have to, but that's going to be so hard to clap back. Yeah, when the whenever. supervisor's on Karen's side. Exactly. Oh my God. I hope she gets Amy in on here because Amy also saw the whole thing go down. Amy was a real one. Yeah. After she had her say, I had mine. I explained everything that happened in detail, exactly as I had before. Her story had a bunch of holes that no one even questioned, and she denied everything I said actually happened. They never came out and said they believe anyone over the other, but I know that Amy had told them something similar to what I had. The only difference being her POV and they still took her side, I feel like. Still took Karen's side? Yikes. They didn't punish either of us, decided to put us on a 45 day watch. And if anything happens again between us, we could be put on probation or terminated. Mm. This is, this is not the way to handle this. Yeah. Where are the cameras uh, at? Yeah. After our meeting together, they met with us separately. They asked me how I felt with how they handled the situation. Badly. I tried to look at it from their standpoint. They have two people saying two very different things. Both have people backing them up. It happened in a room that conveniently we don't have cameras in. Oh. They but, can, yeah. But wait, 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 wait. What about the yelling and stuff? Yeah. Didn't anyone hear that? What, weren't, wasn't that in the camera? Because she tried to leave. Okay. I don't know. They can only take us at our word. I tried to answer honestly and told them I don't know. And that I was glad they brought us both in together to hear what the other had to say. But that what she said happened did not happen. They just nodded. I feel like there's nothing else I can do. I want to tell them to pull the cameras from the other rooms to see if you can hear anything, as Riley said. But I feel like it's too late to bring that up. No, I think you can bring that up at any point. Yeah. It seems like your job is on the line now. Yeah. So I would bring it up. And your safety. Well. And your safety. Yes. Absolutely. But my thing He's already been physical. She tried to escape. The confrontation She tried twice. to leave, yes. Like, why don't you follow up that? Like, yeah. watch that happen. My family says I need to make a police report. I'm not sure what that would do besides causing more problems at work. I plan on finding another job and quitting because I don't appreciate being lied about and the truth not being sought correctly. Karen has been at the bank for 18 years. Should I file a police report? Should I let it go? She's blatantly lying. It seems like they're on her side because she's been at the bank for 18 years. Yeah. And OP's a lot younger. And so they're probably more willing to take uh, Karen's side over hers. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I can't, we, obviously this is just speculation, but sometimes businesses will be biased against pregnant women. They're like, oh, well, she's going to be, you know, uh, leaving anyway. So we can just like side with Karen because she'll be here, which is not to say that is what happened, but they might have, you know thought about that or something overall they suck to answer op's question i think that if op's already like leaving or wants to quit then i think once you find a job and like you're like the quitting is in motion i think you could file a police report i don't know this is i'm all by myself here i'm oh, sorry sorry That's sorry okay. <laughs> the tricky part on the re police report is that the supervisor the supervisor no, but, said no, that's but true. But Amy was there, and if yeah. you have other witnesses, then you should be good to go. Yeah, but it seems like there was only two people in that room. Yeah, and it was really shady yeah. how yeah. one person... I'm just in awe. I'm shocked that the supervisor... Yeah. Just did not do anything. No. And it was like, yeah, Karen's right. Yeah, no, that's wild. She was like, go oh, What I do was... you have to gain from that? No, I don't understand. I don't understand why they're all siding with Karen when she's like obviously causing problems. Yeah. yeah, I just I, I think filing a police report would be very smart. Yeah. I don't know how realistic it would be to make yeah. it happen. Yeah. But if you're continuing to work there and you're about yeah. to have a kid. Yeah. 
No, Yikes. unsafe conditions. Oh, I do have an okay story time. Oh, yes. Okay, tell your okay story time. How many people do you know that works at a bank? Personally? Yeah. Like a friend. Oh. I don't think I know member. any people that work at the bank. Well, I know like two people that work at banks. One of them's my aunt. She's a manager. And another one was a friend. Uh, the friend left and my aunt does not really like her job mm -hmm. because of all the drama that happens at like banks. I don't know why there's so much drama at these places, but they're like, I don't like working here because one, my aunt's like, I have to manage all these people mm -hmm. getting upset over these little things. And it's a similar situation yeah. like this. And then my friend also said the same thing. It's just, maybe it's the confined spaces. Yeah. They're trapped in those little, little things. And money's the root of evil. Yeah. They're surrounded by money all day. They're trapped behind a screen. They're forced to talk to people who are upset about their money. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like an ideal working situation. But if you work at a bank, yeah. Do you is like this it? common? Let me know. Is there a lot of gossip at the bank? Yeah. Are you spreading gossip? Yeah. Are you the source of the gossip? Who knows? But okay. you know what I do know? This next story. Ah! Screamed at in the rain. These are all Karens. That's the title. And this does come from the OKOP subreddit. This is right. This is cross-posted. So this is not a OKOP fan submit the story. But our fan was like, yo. God, check this story out. I'm intrigued. We don't know much based off the title, but. Yeah, but this is a sound safe. <laughs> <laughs> OKOP okay, cross posted by Luke Graves. A man accosted me from across the street once. He trapped me in a conversation in the pouring rain while he had an umbrella and I did not. No. He was yelling at me because Amazon delivered a parcel for his next door neighbors to him by accident. <laughs> I explained I didn't work for nor ever worked for Amazon, though I was also a customer like most people in the neighborhood. He dismissed me, telling me I was in no way his Amazon driver and <laughs> kept berating me, not believing me that I didn't do it. Uh, what? Finally, what? Finally, he asked me, I was completely drenched at this point and angry, what he should do with the package. I said, I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. If you want to be nice, you can give it to your neighbors since their name and address is on it. Or I guess if you want, you can keep it. I didn't put it there. And again, has nothing to do with me. Cue more baby-esque shouting from the Karen. Wait, wait, wait. They're just upset that they got the wrong package. Yeah. <laughs> they, they got the wrong package and they went out in the rain and like accosted the first person they saw. They're like, yo, I got the wrong package. Ah. Ah. They're like, you're not my Amazon driver. And the person's like, no, I was done. I got away from him. I was drenched. After that, he harassed me several times. But each time I just went to my vehicle and left. Whoa, this has been multiple, like different times. He <laughs> with the same package. Ah. He's like, I still haven't got my package. We started passive aggressively taking where I usually parked, but lucky for me, I'm fit. So it really didn't bother me to park a few blocks further away. Yikes. Silver lining, two years later, he dropped dead from a disease. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. That's a bit harsh. Yeah, but I mean, Oof. now he's not going to bother you anymore. Yeah, I guess that is in a way a silver lining. Wow. OP was like, yeah, this man was yelling at me. He's dead. But he's dead now. Cause he can never bother me again. It felt like a like a bag of bricks. Whoa, boy. That, yeah, it really hit me. I feel like we wouldn't have so many Karens if people were treated better medically and mentally in our world. In his right mind, he could have understood that he was yelling at me for no reason. I truly feel it was his disease that made him not understand I wasn't the person slash different people he kept accusing me of being. But another part of me, the part who was harassed, is very glad he's dead. Yikes, that's too very like... That's a, that's a lot of very glad. Different perspective, like the disease man yeah. in this way, but... Yeah. But he's dead now. <laughs> Ooh, uh, there are two edits. He had an autoimmune disease, not mental illness. I do think the stress of the autoimmune was a contributing factor in his limited cognition and hostility. I really believe an increased in quality of healthcare within the USA would have a secondary positive effect on those who need treatment. Less stress equals less Karens. I don't know. That's a good point. Less stress equals less Karens. Yeah, maybe more therapy. Usually stress of their minds. It's true. Edda two. I didn't just walk away at first. All of you are right. I should have. No hablo inglés. My way out of there. I engaged crazy because I was trying to calm him down, pacify him, and improve the situation. That's just who I am. Come at me berating and I will try to get you to calm down and see logic. 
After that, I really couldn't physically get around him. It was so slick. The sidewalk is narrow, old, uneven, and lined by cars on the street and large trees in yards. Also, I wasn't going to touch him to get out of his encroachment on my personal space. Pretty sure I had to cut through a few yards when I did finally peace out from the conversation. My anxiety was on a high alert after that. Yikes. I want to know how they found out that this guy died. Probably like... Because it seems like they kind of know a lot about him. It, it sounds like an apartment complex area. It's probably like, oh... Yeah, if you're seeing her multiple times. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. This is tricky for people that get approached by older people that aren't in their bright mindset. And how do you deal with that? Because you know... They're not in their right mindset, but how do you walk away from the situation safely and also understand the situation? Oh, how, like how do you leave a situation? Like did OP do the right, all the right things or could they have done something better? Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of hard when someone's like accosting you out on the street and you don't really know what to do. Um, I think you just have to walk leave. away. Yeah. I think that's the only safe thing to do. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't engage with them. It doesn't make it better. This is true. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe that's the only advice. Because it seems that OP was in the rain anyway, so I'm not quite sure how they were trapped. Mm. I mean, obviously, I, I, we might just not have all the information. They said, OP said that the guy had an umbrella over his head, but OP was getting drenched. So, yeah, I feel like it's an apartment complex and yeah, he's like, Arr. he's blocking. I think in those situations, you just have to try and walk away as quickly as possible. Yeah. What we're not going to walk away from. What? This next story. I don't work here and you're not a customer here. A new breed of Karen. This is OKOP, home to the craziest true stories on earth. I'm Sophia and Riley. What makes the new breed of Karen different from the old? <laughs> they know how to use their iPhones. <gasps> Which makes them more dangerous. Mmm, watch out. Who? this is an OKOP cross post from IDC123 wife says. I like that it rhymes though. Just had a great experience at my work. Kind of. L, but worth it. Australian based. <gasps> Australian. Love it. Now, Nanda. <laughs> You're Australian? Yes. <laughs> Want to put, let everyone now, know that. Nanda. You're Australian. <laughs> Before I get into it, and just to add a bit of background, I've been a manager in my line of work for over a decade now, and we deal with rude people all the time. I have zero patience for rude people, and I give it back exactly how it's given to me. At my work, I do the post office run each morning, dropping and collecting mail from our P.O. box. Great chance to get out of the office and create new long ways back to work. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Today we had a parcel pickup slip in there. Nothing unusual with that. We get them all the time. So I collect the parcel and take it back to work with the other mail. When I get back to my desk, I notice that the parcel is from Amazon. A lot of Amazon parcels. Amazon's like, you know, runs the world. Runs the world. Addressed to someone who doesn't work here, but has our office PO box details. There is also a contact number for her on the parcel sticker. So being the kind, caring gentleman that I am, I give her a call. Ring, ring. Hey. <laughs> It goes to her voicemail, so I leave a detailed message about the situation and how to contact me. Moments later, I get a call back on my desk phone. Ring, ring. Good afternoon, company name. This is my name speaking. Hmm, I had a missed call from this number, but I have no idea why you would be calling me because I'm not interested in anything you're selling. Oh no, that's okay. I don't want to sell you anything. Karen, is it? We had a parcel in our P.O. box addressed to you. Did you want to come to our office to pick it up? Why do you have a key to my P.O. box, OP? Well, actually, it's our P.O. box. We have had the same one for three years now. Karen. No, it's my P.O. box, and that's illegal. Why do you have a key to my P.O. box? I want to speak to your manager. OP. Uh, okay, go for it. I'm the manager. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Karen. Well, why do you have access to my mail? She yells this whole conversation, but I got sick of writing in caps. OP says, I don't. I have access to my mailbox. I go every day and I've never seen your mail in my box before. So explain to me why you think you have access to mine. You do realize that I am from company name, right? Karen, in a moment of unexpected clarity from her. Well, my P.O. box is explains full address, which is almost our address as we have two post offices nearby. But hers needs the suburb name, then East added to it. Easy. OP. 
Oh, I understand now. Sorry. Well, yeah, it looks like Amazon or Australia Post hasn't added that detail to the label sticker. So it's come to the main post office. Ha ha. Whoops. Trying to calm her a bit. Well, when I made the order, I put my details in as I always do. That's how I have them saved on my Amazon profile, too. So why did it get sent to you? OP. Getting sick of going back and forth with something I have absolutely no time to deal with. How would I know, mate? I don't work for Amazon or the post office. I literally picked up our P.O. box mail and your parcel with it. I didn't have to call you, but I did. I have nothing to do with your mail or your order details. As I've said multiple times now, I am from company name. Well, this needs to be escalated and you will need to drop the parcel at my house ASAP because it's urgent. OP, at this point, I thought my nose started bleeding from inner rage. WTF, what's not being understood here, Karen? Well, then take my parcel back to the post office and tell them about the error. OP, I have absolutely no authority to take a parcel back and have them amend the address. Nope, not gonna happen. You need to come and get it from me or I can take it back and they will return it to Amazon. I probably could have done more, but really at her. Karen, this is urgent medicine I need. OP, you buy urgent medicine from Amazon and they mark it as beauty products on the customs declaration? Bit odd. <laughs> Karen, <laughs> that's none of your business. OP, yeah, exactly. None of this should be my business. Now come and get your parcel and stop blowing up at me. Karen, completely unacceptable behavior. I want to lodge a complaint. OP, you're not a customer of ours. You have no grounds to complain. I'm trying to help you. Karen, Where's your office? I will come right now and you better have some answers for me. OP, beautiful. Our address is blank. Can't wait to catch up. See you then. She hangs up. <laughs> what? What is happening Whoa. here? This lady's a lot. What? Why is she upset that a mistake understand. was made? He's literally like, hey, I have your parcel. And she's like, how dare you? How did you get into my things? She's Yo. a lot. She's a lot. This people is, make mistakes. People, like, it's not even OP's mistake. It was the male's mistake. And he's helping. Yeah. He could have just kept it. Literally. He could have kept her beauty. Okay. If he would have kept it, do you think she would have noticed that it was not there? Well, she would have probably like emailed Amazon and been like, I never received this package. But she wouldn't have gone to him. True. This is what OP's imagining. I imagine she slammed down her phone and absolutely obliterated it because of how angry she was. <laughs> her hands shaking from rage. She cleans the froth from the sides of her mouth grabs her handbag, makes sure she's carrying her Karen ID and heads to her new 4WD that she only uses for city travel. Very active imagination. Myself and the other office staff share a great laugh over it. We are currently pacing the room waiting for her to get here. Everyone wants to witness this pure stupidity firsthand. Oh boy. That call was now three hours ago. Still not here. We'll keep you updated in the comments. And there is an update. He put a sad face emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't he's like, that. He's like, oh, wish she would come. Wish she would come. Dude, Stop by. If she comes, what do you think is going to happen? She's going to like scream at everyone or something. She's going to be like, I tried to come earlier and you didn't let me in. Mm. She could blame it on them for her she, not being there. She probably is. This is insane. No, 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 no. That's all I got to say. I wonder where he works. Yeah, company name. Company name. Company it, name. That's all like we know. Some IT place. Yeah. Imagine if it's a gym and she pulls up to the gym, like a gym, like a CrossFit gym or something. Yeah, and they're all like super buff. She's like, And they're like, we've got your package for you. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry for yelling. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There is an update. Still no Karen. Darn. Dang. We have now held two separate staff meetings to discuss what should be done to the package. (laughs) These were some of the most productive meetings we have ever had. And I feel everyone has become closer during this time. A real team bonding moment. She has until this time tomorrow. We'll keep you guys posted. Nice. Wow. They're ransoming the package. <laughs> they call her up. They're like, you have until two tomorrow or else your package gets it. And they open it. Yeah. And use it. There's another update. She comes. I'm putting money on it. She comes. I'm putting money on it. I bet she comes. Okay. So I'm actually shaking at what just went down. <gasps> so here whoa, goes. Whoa. <laughs> I'm shaking in anticipation. I started a new post as I didn't want the conclusion of part one to be lost in the comments after the story got so popular. I didn't realize you guys loved my Karen so deeply. I also wanted to note, looking at the package again yesterday, she had added delivery instructions, leave at address in a secure place if no one is present. Really gives you an idea of the Karen mindset as 
This is addressed to a P.O. box. They are generally very secure. So did she expect a postal officer to guard the P.O. box until it's picked up? Anyway, she just came in now and wow, I didn't expect it to get any worse, but it did almost immediately too. Whoa. What do you think happened? She, mm. she came in. What can you, I don't even, I can't even think. I can't even of think of something could that do. could be. Yeah. These are like Australian men. And I don't know what an Australian Karen looks like, but I know it's going to be heated. I know heat's about accent. to come. Yeah. Heat's going to come. She, she comes in. She's like, ah! and they're all like, ah! trying to make sense of it. And then yeah. she throws a vase on the floor. She throws a vase on the floor. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Because my team are quite busy and I oversee their workloads, I sit closest, but still hidden to the main foyer reception area. I generally greet all the customers and take the majority of the calls to our office. My team has to focus on complex financial deals and don't need the distraction of people asking general questions who just walked in without an appointment. We keep an old school desk bell on the reception counter where no one sits with a sign next to it asking to ring for assistance. Come 9.30 a.m. ish. That's early. And I think I hear the bell. As you are all probably aware, normally when you ring a bell, you hit the top and instantly move your hand back to allow the vibration to create the noise required to get someone's attention. (laughs) Uh, He's like, I need to explain how bells work because presumably Karen did not understand. What I heard was the initial ding of the bell, but none of that vibration and loudness. There was an angry, powerful, yet to be removed hand resting on the bell. (laughs) The hair on my neck stood up. She's here. I immediately lean back on my chair, which gives me an ample view of the reception area. I see a short woman in her 60s with glasses and surprisingly not a typical Karen haircut already staring me down. Uh oh. I jump up and run out. Hello, how are you? Karen, without hesitation. You have my package. Definite attitude already. It's her. OP. Ah, yes, of course. Thanks for coming in. I'm IDC123, WFE. (laughs) We talked on the phone. I extended my hand out to shake hers. Karen. I won't shake your hand. Sorry. At this moment, my mind is racing. Is she being rude? Is it a religious thing? How the F do I even respond to this moment? This has probably only happened twice in my life. OP. Okay, no problems. I will give you your package. Just wait here a moment. I go back to my desk and retrieve the package from my drawer, which she can see me do. I walk back to her and she is again already at me. Where are you keeping the package? Opie. In my drawer? Karen. Not very secure. Opie. (laughs) Why would it be? You're in my office, which you can clearly see is not a larger version of a P.O. box or a larger version of a post office for that matter. Karen looking angry at me in silence like she wants a better explanation. OP. Look, I'm actually having a lot of trouble understanding why you're being so rude about this. I held this package for you in good faith. I called you to let you know I had it so you didn't have to go through the hassle. I get cut off. Karen. Well, it's the inconvenience of having to come here. My brain legit snapped. OMG, says OP. You are an actual joke. You know that? You're the dumbest person I've ever had to deal with. Take your package and get out of my office. If I ever see another one of your packages with my mail, I will throw it straight in the bin. F helping you again. Oh my God. Yo. He went off. Karen mumbling to herself while she grabs the package and digs for her keys from her handbag. Absolutely disgusting. (gasps) OP. Yes, you are. Shots fired. You should reevaluate how you treat people that have tried to help you. She actually turned around to point and yell at me, but barely got through her sentence. I will never deal with this company again. Opie cuts her off. You don't deal with us now. (laughs) And we don't want to deal with someone like you. What a bad threat. Get out of my office. She stormed out. I watched her go to her car, which was parked in our maintenance driveway. This actually made me laugh so hard. I will explain why. Next to our main entrance is a maintenance driveway. Throughout the day, We will have multiple contractor cars parked here to work on the many levels of the building. In the time since she has come in, her car has been parked in by two utility 4WD, bearing the building maintenance company name. The guys are just standing at their cars having a chat. I see her yelling at them to move their cars. They look at her and barely budge. She proceeds to get in her car and I watch over the next few minutes as she continuously looks back and forth to see if they're moving their cars for her to get out. The maintenance guys start moving at an actual snail pace. 
Juan is even checking his phone while he walks to this driver's side door. I'm just laughing my ass off at this point. The other guys in the office have all come out and are enjoying these final moments of her insanity. I kid you not, these guys took about five minutes to move their car for her. She beeped about four times, drawing the attention of many people walking by. I really wish I was making this up because her exaggerated performance was comical. Oh my gosh. She finally got her car out. And as she was driving off, I walked outside and spoke to the maintenance guys and asked what she said to them. Maintenance guy with a thick Kiwi accent, which I also can't do. Yeah, bro. She full came out and straight up told us to move the effing cars. They were, of course, unaware of who she was. So they just took their time to piss her off. (laughs) I told them the story and we all had a good laugh about it. Thinking back now, I'm pretty happy with the outcome, to be honest. I got to tell her some honest truths about the situation, and she obviously thought she could continue being a bee. I must have caught her off guard. I really hope that that's the last I see of her. Can't wait to tell my future kids and grandkids about her in the years to come. Wow. And thank you for telling us. Thank you for telling us. Thank you to our OK fan who submitted that story. It was great. That was phenomenal. You get us. You get us. Wow. You know. Was he in the wrong for like telling her off like that? A bit uh, harsh? She, uh, I don't know. She was being a lot. She was yelling at him a lot. I think personally, I'd just be like, here's your package. A little bit too harsh. Please leave. Yeah. Maybe that would, that would have been enough. Maybe. Yeah. Because she's already yelling at you. It's not going to solve anything to yell at her more. Yeah. Then maybe just like take your package, please leave or I'll have security escort you out. Yeah. But I feel like he did the right thing. She was being, she was just screaming. Screaming at everyone. I love that telepathically, the guys in the car yeah. were like on the same wavelength. They were like, yeah, they were like, oh, she sucks. And yeah. Just right well, there with it them. It all worked out. Karen got her package. OP got to clap back. And we got a great story from our. And we got a subreddit. great story. Wow. Win, win, win. Win. And then lose to the Karen. Big ol' L to the Karen. Okay. Ugh. Entitled neighbor thinks he can wander into my back garden when he wants? This is the plot of Untitled Goose Game. What? (laughs) Like you're a goose and you wander into people's backyards and cause mischief. What? So KBHAFC90 says, Nice. Going to try and set the scene a bit here. My house backs onto a number of flats. I have a little terrace garden out the back that is linked to my property. Below that terrace is a small patio area that is linked to the flats, which they can access to by their own back door. There are then steps up to my area, which are gated off. I also have a locked gate that allows access to the terrace garden because I live on a main road. A few months ago, that flat behind me had a problem with their plumbing and the drain behind was overflowing with literal poop. That's gross. Ew. That's gross. Ooh, uh. Obviously an extremely nasty situation for everyone. When the owner of the flats, we will call him T, asked if he could come round the back and check the drain, of course we said yes because we're not total a-holes. After he checked the drain, he said he'd need somebody to come out, check it, and drain it. We agreed, but made it clear we would need to be made aware before it happened as stipulated in our rental agreement with the letting agent. He said fine, and we got notice before any work was done so we could ensure our gate was unlocked. I thought that was the end of it. And boy, was I wrong. Uh Uh-oh. I feel like he didn't listen to their one stipulation. (laughs) A few weeks later, I was at home and heard my front gate open. Uh Uh-oh. I found it odd because my boyfriend wasn't due home from work for a little while and nobody knocked on the door. The door to my house is immediately next to the gate, so it's seconds between the gate opening and a knock. When the gate went a second time, I looked outside to find T walking away. Uh. Obviously, he had entered my property without my consent. Yo. You have to give 24. I mean, I don't know if this is in America because they keep using flats, but in America, you have to use, give 24 hour notice. Really? Yeah. For a landlord to enter a property. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Or at least in California. I shouldn't be making bold general statements. I mean, I'm okay if my landlord shows up whenever. But it was good. Uh, Karen. Hey. Not we, actual Karen, though. Not actual Her Karen. name is Karen. Yeah, that is her actual name. That's her She's actual really name. cool. She's cool, though. <laughs> She's not a Karen. She's not. Wanting to give him the benefit of the doubt, believing that he just wanted to check the drain one last time, I didn't say anything about it, just letting it slide. A couple of days later, my boyfriend, who had given him his number to deal with the drain issue, got a phone call from him, saying he needed to gain access to the back of our property, and why did we have our gate locked? So he only called them to check in 
after trying to get into their place. Wait, why is he trying to get in the backyard, though? I don't know. He just says he needs access to the property. But it's wild that he called them after, like, trying to get into it. This is wild. Oh, yikes. As my boyfriend said, we were both at work and neither could come home to deal with his request. And if he needed something to speak to the letting agents, he just hung up. I spoke to my boyfriend and we collectively came to the decision that we would keep the gate locked at all times, even when we were in, because I didn't feel comfortable with him just walking into my property as and when he felt like that. And he did not like that. And there is more, but like... Yeah, this is not okay. What can you do something about this? Yeah. Because he's the He's the landlord, but he's supposed like legally, based off California law, don't know about this place. You have to give twenty four hours notice or that's a violation to the lease. But my question is, is there something legally you can do? Or like can you sue them? Wait, can you look it up? If a landlord does not give you twenty four hours notice before entering your property, what steps can you take? All right. If a landlord enters a tenant's property without giving permission, given the required notice, it could be considered a violation of the tenant's rights. Ooh, the specific consequences of such a violation can vary depending on the local laws and the lease agreement. In some cases, tenants may have the right to pursue legal action against their landlords for these violations. Yeah. This could include suing for damages if the tenant can prove the landlord unauthorized cause damages or harm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there is legal action these people could take. Yeah. If this continues. If this continues. But like, it seems like damages need to happen. Maybe, yeah. Get really expensive grass and be like, he yeah, stepped he on stepped our grass. Yeah, he stepped on it. Or we just put plants right there. Yeah. Yeah, just like booby trap it, home alone it. <laughs> and then he, he comes in, you're like, he broke it. The next time he tried to get in, my boyfriend was at home and I was at work. When he opened the gate, he got a stream of abuse from T, asking why we had locked the gate when he had permission to have access to the back when he wants, and there is a note in our rental agreement to state this. There should not be a note that. That can't be illegal. He threatened to get solicitors on us if we didn't leave the gate open or give him a key to get in when he wanted. It was here, he said, because he had renovated the house. He deserved to gain access on his terms, even though he wasn't our landlord. He's not even a landlord? Oh, what? Oh, that he absolutely shouldn't have access to this place. But he renovated the house. So? But he took time to do that. That's crazy. That's like hiring a contractor and they're like, well, I worked on the house. <laughs> so I deserve to live here. Yikes, dude. My boyfriend just told him to take it up with the letting agent if there was a problem and shut the door on his face. When I got home, I combed through my rental agreement and there was no such note in place. The only thing I could find about access was we require 24 hours notice for any work or access to the property, as I said. Yes. Including the garden, unless it was urgent and they required access sooner. But they still had to provide detail in writing about any work that would be done even within 24 hours. Because of this, I told the letting agent who had communication with T that he would have to ask for access to my garden via them. And I require the written notice as stipulated in my contract. They agreed to pass the message on. Things cooled a bit, but the problem with the drain started again. Yo. We could see it was overflowing and apparently T was aware. But we hadn't heard anything from him or the letting agent about when somebody would come and deal with it. This was when I got my own back. I'm probably a bad person for this, but at this stage, I had enough. What do you think they're going to do? Uh, Booby trap. Booby trap. Booby trap. Hoopy trap. Hoopy trap. Because <gasps> of the drain. Right. Poopy trap. T turned up with the drainage company on a day that I was at home unwell. I was lying on the sofa when I heard a van pull up and somebody tried to open the gate. But of course, it was locked. The bell went and I considered getting up and answering the door. But when I heard T's voice, I decided I wasn't going to feed his entitlement. I just lay back down, stuck my earplugs in and tried to go back to sleep. For the next 30 or so minutes, he tried to get in, constantly ringing the bell knocking loudly on my window, shouting into the house, screaming at what I could only assume was my boyfriend on the phone, but I ignored it all. Eventually, he got the message and left. When my boyfriend came home from work, he came back to give us a verbal dressing down, threatening legal action again because he needed access to the property and we didn't provide it. I pointed out that neither of us were in when he turned up. My blinds were shut and nobody can see in, so he didn't know I was off sick. And he didn't give us the agreed notice that he would require access. And in the future, I will no longer be dealing with him. If he wants access to go through the letting agent and the next time I find him in my garden, I'm ringing the police for trespassing. 
He's still threatening me, so I told him to go for it because I get free legal advice due to a membership I had. And if he really wants to go down that route, be my guest. I've honestly never seen somebody shut up so quickly. He said he'd go through the letting agent in the future, and I said, good choice, and shut the door in his face. Nice. Hell yeah. After that, he solely dealt with the letting agent and followed all instructions once he knew I had access to free legal advice. The best part about this whole incident was he could have checked the drain from his own property and never needed access to my garden. What? He just wanted to flex his muscles and thought he could bully us because we're a younger couple. That makes no sense. Huh? Huh? Yeah, no, legally this guy is not allowed onto your property. And good for you for like... Yeah, standing up. Yeah, good for you for standing up to uh, this horrible, horrible neighbor. He sucks. Yeah, maybe you just want to see like your flowers. Yeah, he was like, I really like your garden. I need to get some pictures. What if he was like growing a very rare plant in your garden and that's why he wanted to come see it all the time? He hid a very rare plant in your garden. Yep. And he's like, I need back there now. I buried my treasure in your garden. Please. I need to dig it up. I renovated your house and I buried treasure in your garden. Karen called the police because I'm going out at weird times and slaps me. What? <laughs> what? What's a weird time to go out? I am um, 2. 2 p.m.? I am. Oh. So Sipke says, I am referring to this post as if it were happening now, but actually it occurred a few years ago. The title sounds strange, but I really don't know how else to describe it. I feel like the title was very to the point. Oh, it was great. Like you told the whole story. Like I want to read it now. Yeah, it was a good hook. I was a 16 year old from Serbia and I live in the building next to my grandmother's, but our entrances don't face each other. So if I manage, I'll draw a map. Now our buildings are divided into several buildings. Strange, but each entrance functions like its own building, as if we only share walls. You can't exit one entrance to get to another without leaving the building. Now I live in the entrance facing another building. If I go around it, the other entrance leads to my grandmother's apartment. Unfortunately, my grandfather passed away eight years ago, leaving my grandmother alone in her apartment. My parents back then, behind my back, saw one empty room and asked my grandmother if we could turn it into my private room because I needed privacy. My grandmother was thrilled by the idea. After discussing with me, we made the room for me. Since I followed my grandmother's rules and helped her, I didn't spend all my time at her place. Instead, I switched between apartments as needed. For example, I come home from school, leave my things, and go to my grandmother's to sleep, then return home in the morning to have breakfast. I had a sort of routine for when I went where, with an accuracy of plus or minus an hour. Wait, so so while they were living with their parents, they were also given another room with the grandmother? I guess so, because it sounds like the grandmother was either closer to college or whatever. No, but they still have their own apartment. I think they're all living together. I think this kid I read earlier, he's like 16. Goes to live with his grandmother for for a little bit and then comes back home. It might be that like OP is living with like multiple, like they have one room and they're all living in the same room together. Okay. And then they realize the grandmother has her own room. And so they're like, oh, if you want. Gotcha. Empty room. So maybe that's why. Now I live in the entrance facing another building. If I go around it, the other entrance leads to my grandmother's apartment. Directly in front of my entrance is another entrance. And above it on the window, 70% of the time when I went out, there was an elderly woman. Mm. She always looked at me somewhat grumpily as I passed by. Sometimes I glanced at her, but I had headphones on and often wore a hoodie, so I ignored her. When I had the second shift, I usually got home around 8.20, and then I went to my grandmother's around 10.30, of course, with exceptions. That woman was almost always there, but it didn't bother me because why would it? I saw her for 20 seconds a day. Once, when I was leaving my house to go to my grandmother's without headphones on or a hoodie, she finally said something. Karen. You're going to get high again. Huh? Every day you go out with a hoodie over your head in the dead of night. It was 1030 then. I can clearly see what you're doing. What am I doing? Dealing drugs. What's in that backpack? That's none of your business. Just a laptop and equipment. I think it's drugs. (laughs) Open it and let me see. Me, I felt like telling her that the only thing I would open for her is a punch in the face. Leave me alone. And I just walked away. The next day, she was waiting for me outside the entrance. What's in the bag? You're a psycho. If you don't tell me, I'll call the police. OP, call whoever you want. I'm out of here. I left while she was yelling at me. The next day, two police officers were waiting for me outside the door with Karen. That's him. He's the local dealer. Me, what's going on? We'll refer to the police officers as P1 and P2. 
P1. We received a report that drug trafficking is happening here. Nice. <laughs> Me looking at him. Is this for real? P2. As absurd as it may seem, we have to check it out. <laughs> me, can you search me and let me go then? We'll search you, but we won't let you go immediately because the lady said she saw you dealing. OP, that woman is crazy, but do whatever you have to do. I just want to get this over with. P1 searched me while Karen was yelling about me being a dealer. P2, how old are you? 16, says OP. Do you have an ID? <laughs> me. I literally went to the building next door. I don't even have a wallet. Can I go to my apartment to get it? I'll leave my backpack with a laptop as collateral that I'll return. You live here? P1 says. OP. Yes. I'll accompany you to the apartment, but won't enter. OP. Okay. When I returned to the apartment, my parents asked what I had forgotten. I said, can I get my wallet? My ID's inside. I want to buy juice. By the way, I really wanted to buy juice for later. <laughs> okay. Why didn't you tell him about the police officers? I returned to the police officer and my parents hadn't noticed anything yet. Not yet. We return outside and I show my ID, which was valid. There's nothing in the backpack. The kid didn't cause any trouble. And let's be real. Just look at him. I know he has drugs. I saw him. Where? Says OP. At this point, Karen made a mistake, pointing to the place under the cameras. OP asks, when? She said the exact date. OP says, Great, we can check the cameras. Realizing her plan backfired, Karen did the only sensible thing. What's the only sensible thing? Um, she said, I'm sorry. Yeah. This was all a mistake. Yeah, of course. She slapped him. Oh. <laughs> she slapped a 16-year-old <laughs> child. Super sensible. <laughs> he won, handcuffed her, and put her in the car while Karen was screaming at me. A small detail about me. I have a lot, a lot of pimples. I know one person who has approximately as many pimples as I do, and that's it. When you slap me, it bled because I barely felt the slap, which made it look worse than it actually was. Oh, that sucks. Mm. He one went and informed my parents. They came out and my mom wiped away the blood while my dad talked to the police. He asked the officer if he could send me to wash up and P1 sent me. Karen was convicted of assaulting a minor and misusing the police. Ooh. Wow. Since we managed to hush up the whole story from the neighbors by some miracle, no one saw anything. Karen received a punishment and a stern warning. I was late for playing with my friends, which cost me a good heist and GTA. Dang. Edit, she wasn't in jail, but got a good enough warning that she didn't say worse to me since then. But she's still in her usual spot next to a window, just glaring. Dude, that's so spooky. She's just sitting there like... Doing that the whole time. Yeah, that's yikes. That is a Karen if I've ever heard of one. That's crazy. Slapping this a minor? Slapping a minor. Even if he was dealing drugs, you don't slap a minor. What made you think he was selling drugs? I, literally, I feel like she saw a kid in a hoodie and a, and a backpack and was like, drugs. I saw this in a movie once. I saw it in a movie once. Drugs. Wow. Well, that's that's the wrap of that story. Um, I think it's pretty clear cut that Karen is in the wrong. Yeah. Do you have any Karen stories, Riley? Hi. Hey. Yeah. I have one. I don't have one off the top of my head. I have a lot of like small Karen stories from when I worked at Starbucks. Okay, go. What's the um, worst one? We didn't have crazy ones because um, I worked on campus, so it wasn't it was just like mostly students. Um, but one time this guy yelled at me for forgetting to put nuts in his bag of oatmeal, like on the thing, it, there was instructions to like have the water separate from the oatmeal and have like everything separated. So I did that. And then I guess I forgot to put the almonds in because usually we denote which there's two different types of oatmeals. So you can either get it with like blueberries or you can get it with almonds. And so it didn't say which one. So I didn't give him the almonds. And then he comes back and he starts yelling at me. He's like, I want where are my almonds? And I was like, okay, you could have just asked nicely. That's crazy. He was yelling at me. I was like, I'm just a child. I'm I just a child. But I felt like one. I don't know any better. Yeah. I don't understand why people get so mad at fast food restaurants. I know. I'm like, dude, I get paid $15 an hour not to be yelled at for not putting almonds in your bag when you can just literally get them. If I get the complete wrong order, I'll probably be like upset, but I'm still going to eat it. The only times I ever like ask like bring up that I got the wrong order is if I can't eat it you know because mm, like yeah. I can't I usually try to get almond milk because every other milk hurts my stomach so I'll bring up that sometimes sometimes I'll just push through it 
Uh, and if it's like, you know, there's meat in my order and that, that mm, yeah, those yeah. are the, really the only times I bring up stuff. Cause I'm like, they don't, they don't get paid enough to deal with this. Uh, well, that's a wrap. If you love us, make sure to subscribe. We love you and, and see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.